Hi guys, thank you for joining me back here again on Bushcraft Basics with Ben. It's an absolute pleasure to bring each and every one of you along with me today. We're deep in the English countryside and as you can see by the woodland behind me, summer is starting to finally take a grip. We've got all these different shades of green, pinks and whites just shooting up from the ground and all the trees finally have leaves back on them so it's an amazing time to be out and I thought I'd bring you guys along with me today to make a quick video or a quick tutorial on how to make a debris shelter. Stay tuned guys, stick around to the end, hit that thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. things to note when building your debris shelter is that a debris shelter is never supposed to be luxurious it's not supposed to be comfortable it's just basically intended to keep you surviving or alive for one or two nights in a survival situation and because of that we don't want to be wasting calories that we don't have we're not going to be sawing or chopping splitting cutting any kind of wood that's the reason this is called a debris shelter because a lot of what we're going to use to build this is going to be found on the floor in front of us or the surrounding area So as you can see guys, laid out in front of me is a few pieces of wood that I've just dragged back. I'm not thinking too much about shape or size at this point. All the decision making um, as to how I want this, this shelter to look will come later on. Right now my main concern is just to get as many pieces of wood back to this area as I can. Okay, so you can see now that I've got two decent sized piles of debris wood and what I need to do now is pick out three deep sized pieces that will become the foundation of my bed. Those pieces will help me hold the insulation in place. And so once I've rooted through all this and picked out those three pieces, I will let you guys see which ones I chose and explain why I chose them, etc. And uh, yeah, we'll go from there. So these are the two pieces of wood that I've chose and um, this is going to be eventually my bed. So what we need to do now is go off and find lots of this green stuff and bring it back here put it in between these two pieces of wood because this is essentially is going to be the bed that we lie on so the more we have in between these two pieces of wood and the more we build it up the better it's going to be the more the more warm and the more heat we're going to maintain if it's winter time obviously you will find dead leaves on the floor bundle as many of them as you can and bring them back here do exactly the same Lost, I was lost without any direction Had a line so many times But I needed attention No matter what I say No matter my regrets Things still been said and done mm -hmm. There's not a part of me that wants to say no mm -hmm. But I have realized to let go, oh, oh, cause something's broken, and I'm the reason. Is that so, this is the bed complete. I started this first, obviously, because you can imagine how much of a nightmare this would be trying to get this all underneath the frame if we, if we were to start with the frame first. So, build your bed first, and the reason for anybody that's wondering why I used two logs at either side is not to make it look fancy or anything, it's just that because. Once we apply pressure by lying down onto this bed, all this insulation is going to be pushed out to the sides and we might lose a lot of that insulation, something that we don't want. So we put the logs in place there. When we lie down, that will keep all the insulation in place. This is quite spongy. You can see now I've spent a good 15, 20 minutes making a nice thick bed of um, this vegetation that I just basically walked around. I didn't walk too far. Remember, it's all about conserving calories and I just picked them up from the ground and started to fill this bed out. This is going to keep you from getting cold and this is going to save you 
um, or save you from losing all your heat into the ground. So yeah, keep going with this if you need to, but this for me is perfectly fine. Now we're gonna start building the frame. Another great little tip is that when you start to build your frame and your doorway specifically, look for a piece that has a Y end, like this piece here. And then all you can do is just start to interlock pieces to slowly and gradually build up your frame. Now you could go one step further in a survival situation, what you could do is take off your shoelace and you could bound all this together just to increase the strength. But so far, so good. This seems pretty sturdy to me, it's not going anywhere. And uh, yeah, the Y shape piece of wood has done a really good job of holding this in place. Now what we're gonna start doing is laying down the rib cage or the spine of the shelter with other pieces of debris. So this is the part now where we can start breaking pieces of wood. We've already got the bed in place and the frame itself is all upright. We just need to start fleshing out a bit at the sides and to do that we need to get the correct sizes of wood by breaking them. So as you can tell now guys, we're much further along in the process. All I've done is just carry on with that same system of stacking up sticks, branches, etc. at the sides. And you need to keep doing this to eliminate as much light on the inside as you can. So if we look inside now, you can see that there's only one or two patches of light coming through. And that's because we've eliminated most of the big gaps um, that were once there before. All we need to do now is just carry on doing this for about another 15, 20 minutes. And we're gonna do that by stacking this vegetation that we found for the bed. On the outside. I've just been around having a little scout around the area to see what I can find. One thing I did find and you you guys might be able to find it where you are as well is old tree bark that's fallen off like this. These are great pieces um, that you can just lay across the frame of the shelter and this will be really good when it comes to laying on top all this green vegetation. Just a quick side note guys when you are building the shelter at the start try to taper your bed off at the very end because we don't need that much room down at the foot end and the only real spacious part of this shelter is going to be the entrance where we're climbing in and out. Now the more room that we can eliminate inside the shelter the better that will be for us because it gives our heat less chance of escaping. For those that are claustrophobic as well you might struggle in a shelter like this maybe this isn't your best option in a survival situation but if you want and you can put up with the small size inside you will be relatively cosy in this and um, it will keep you alive which is its sole purpose for the one or two days you need for help to arrive. So there we have it guys, uh, this is the debris shelter to Lula. Out of the way, go on, out. This is the debris shelter finally finished. You can see now that I've padded the sides out with all this vegetation. And this is a very um, versatile, quick and easy shelter to put up if you are in a survival situation. Like I said, there was no tools used to build this. I didn't use a saw or a knife. Um, everything I did use to build the shelter was found on the, in the surrounding area around me, so very easy to build. If you guys want to see any more of these survival shelter builds, then drop down in the comments box below. Let me know what type of shelter you want to see me do a tutorial on, and I will do them in future videos. Um, but until next time, like I said, do give this one a thumbs up. Drop down in the comments box below. It's always nice to chat to you guys and see what you've been up to in your life. Subscribe if you haven't already. And until next time, guys, take it easy. Look after yourselves, stay safe, and I'll see you on the next one. Lost, I was lost without any direction Had a line so many times But I needed attention No matter what I say No matter my regrets Things still been said and done mm -hmm. There's not a part of me That wants to say no mm -hmm. But I have realized I had to let go